Assalamu alaikum, my dear student. I am Dr. Mahabub, professor and head of the department of the ENT of the Addi Medical College. Today, my topic is autosclerosis. It is a localized hereditary disorder affecting the endochondral layer of the otic capsule in which the new vascular spongy bone causes the ankylosis of the foot plate of the stapes. An autosclerotic lesion consists of the bone resorption, new bone formation, vascular proliferation, and the connective tissue stroma. Bone resorption is caused by the osteoclast and new bone formation by the osteoblast and vascular proliferation and connective tissue stroma. And the condition is usually uh, commonly the bilateral and other synonym of the disease is osteospongiosis. And this is the commonest cause of non supportive conductive deafness in, ca in case of adult. And etiology of the autosclerosis, it is number one is the genetic predisposition. Number two is autoimmune disease. Number three is measles. Number four is the biochemical changes or biochemistry. Uh, and uh, by mnemonic is the Jambio. G for the genetic predisposition. A for the autoimmune disease and A's. M for the measles. And bio is the biochemistry. Genetic predisposition is the familial. Familial. Number of the family history of the deafness is present in 50% of the cases. Race most common in white races. Then sex is, is occurs more commonly in females, twice as common as in males. And then the hereditary, there is a genetic factor. See coal A1 1A1 gene. There is genetic factor coal 1A1 gene. Apparently inherited on an autosomal pattern, that is autosomal dominant. Then the autoimmune disease, the humoral autoimmunity to type 2 collagen. And three is the age of onset usually occurs between 20 to 30 years of age. It rarely starts before 10 and after 40 years. Then the measles, elevated level of the anti measles antibody reported in perilymph of the patient undergoing a stepatectomy for autosclerosis. Then the biochemical change or biochemistry changes in the mucopolysaccharide composition and concentration of perilymph. Pathology. It is a localized disease of the otic capsule involving the endochondral layer or middle layer. Because otis, otic capsule, this is the bony labyrinth, it has three layers. Number one is the endosphere, the inner layer. And middle layer is the endochondral layer. And outer layer is the periosteal layer. But here, the disease occurs in the, in the endochondral layer of the otic capsule. Normal bone is absorbed and replaced by the spongy bone at one or a scattered site. The commonest site of the occurrence is fistula antifenestrum in front of the oval window. It is 80 to 90 percent. An early immature bone stains markedly blue with hemotoxylin, giving the name blue mantle. And type of the autosclerosis, the stepedial autosclerosis. Number two is the cochlear autosclerosis. Number three, the histology autosclerosis. Stepedial autosclerosis, it, it causes the stepes fixation and conductive deafness is the most common variety. And there are various types of the stepedial osteosclerosis. Number one is the anterior focus is in front of the oval window, which is called um, fistula antifenestrum. It is 80 to 90 percent. Then the posterior focus behind the oval window. Then the circumferential, it involves this, uh, this margin of the stepes foot plate and biscuit type. It occurs in the foot plate except the annular ligament. Annular ligament will be free, the biscuit type obliterative, which causes the complete involvement of the foot plate is the obliterative type. Number two is the cochlear autosclerosis. Here the autosclerotic focus involves the region of the oval round window or other areas in the otic capsule and may cause sensorineural hearing loss probably due to the liberation of the toxic material into the inner air fluid. Then the histologic autosclerosis, this type of autosclerosis remains asymptomatic, causes neither conductive deafness nor sensorineural hearing loss and it can be diagnosed by post-mortem examination. Then the clinical feature of the autosclerosis, first of all, the main symptom is the conductive deafness which is progressive in nature and usually bilateral, 70 to 90 percent of cases and onset is insidious. Second one is the tinnitus is usually present in 80 percent of cases is, is sometimes more troublesome than deafness and it may indicate the rapid progress of the disease. Number three is the paracosis willisi is often present 
It is the ability to hear better in the noisy surrounding, such as public transport, engine room, bazaar, etc. As the people talk louder above the noise level and above the threshold of the autosolotic patient, and thus the patient has no difficulty in hearing. And then the speech, monotonous, well modulated, soft voice, and vertigo is very rare. Is rare. So you will tell the four symptoms. Number one, the progressive conductive type of deafness, which is bilateral. Number two is the tinnitus. Number three is the paracrosis willisi. And number four is the speech, which is monotonous, well modulated, short voice. Then the sign, otoscopy, reveals the normal tympanic membrane in most cases. But in some cases, the pink tinge or red blush may be seen due to the hyperemia of the promontory and vascular autoespongiotic auto mass. And this is called the flamingo pink tinge or positive short sign. Tuning fork test, Rhenish test is negative on both sides and Weber will be lateralized to the more deaf ear and absolute bone conduction test is equal, which indicates the conductive type of the deafness. Investigation. Pure tonodimetry shows the normal bone conduction and air conduction loss of about 30 to 60 decibel, among more in the lower frequency. And there is good airborne gap, at least 15 airborne gap, 15 decibel, and Carhartt's notch is present. What is Carhartt's notch? Carhartt's notch is the bone conduction curve shows a dip at 2000 hertz is present in some cases that is 33 percent approximately approximate cases step is fixation influence the measured bone conduction by increasing the impedance of the ENR air fluid causing an apparent bone conduction loss maximum at 2000 hertz producing this nost so then this is the Carhartt's notch this is the Carhartt's notch and the uh, air conduction loss, the conduction loss in the lower frequency. This is the more in the lower frequency and it is at 2000, 2000 hertz, the Carhartt's notch. There is a long air bone gap. Then the speech discrimination, speech audiometry. Speech audiometry shows the good speech discrimination score. That is the normal and the impedance audiometry shows the normal or reduced compliance type AS graph or type AS curve type AS curve we see the type AS curve here the compliance is 0.17 ml or the less than 0.3 when a tympanometry a compliance is less than 0.3 ml then we call it type AS curve the differential diagnosis chronic supportive non supportive order is media healed supportive order is media and ossicular discontinuity or fixation, maybe whether it is maybe congenital, traumatic, or inflammatory, or sensorial deafness in young adult, and autoespongiosis imperfecta. Treatment the treatment option are the following. The treatment option are three. Three is the treatment option, but the surgery is the treatment of choice in case of stapedal autosclerosis. But the treatment option are three. Number one, the surgical treatment. Number two is the hearing aid. Number three is the medical treatment. The three options, surgical treatment is stepatectomy or a stepatotomy and hearing aid, the conventional conductive type of hearing, hearing aid, air conditioned hearing or the bone anchored hearing aid or medical treatment. Stepatectomy, this is the modern operation. Here the step is including its foot plate. Total or partial is, is removed and an artificial prosthesis which acts artificial prosthesis which acts as a new stephys and is fitted on the lenticular process of incas to the oval window and various types of prosthesis are used such as the fat wire teflon piston and teflon is piston is the most widely used and a facial graft is placed on the fenestra over the foot plate of the stephys to prevent the perilymph fistula here is that um, before removal of the stepis foot plate is a normal then the stepis foot plate is removed then the stepis process is inserted which is shown in magnified space in case of the step long process of the in case of the stepis 
uh, uh, where the uh, prosthesis was inserted and another end is the in the fenestra of the oval window. Post-operative advice after the stepidectomy operation, nose blowing should be avoided and mouth should be kept open on coughing and sneezing. Number two, flying or going over a mountain pass should be avoided at least 10 days after operation or when an upper respiratory tract infection develops. Diving when swimming should be avoided yeah. and lifting heavy weight it should be avoided. Di driving should be avoided within 10 days. Any hearing loss, vertigo or infection must be reported immediately. Stepidotomy. This is called the small fenestra stepidotomy. Nowadays, the stepidotomy uh, is most modern and here a small hole is made in the full part of the stepes only to allow the prosthesis. And the operation is now preferred as the long term result is better with less complication. In recent years, laser is used fitting in the uh, fitted in the operating microscope to make the hole on the foot plate hearing aid is advised when the operation is contraindicated or the patient is not agreed to do the operation and conventional hearing aid or bone anchored hearing aid is usually used and medical treatment we tell the medical treatment there is no medical one can cure the disease but in case of cochlear atherosclerosis we are giving the medical treatment the sodium flu uh, sodium fluoride tablet 20 mg tablet is available in the market and 50 mg daily administered for two years and 25 mg daily for lifelong and is to be repeated if needed. Preoperative counseling of the surgical treatment. Hearing aid is the best. Preoperative counseling of the surgical treatment. Hearing aid is the best, best alternative. And second, at least 85% chances of the obtaining a good hearing improvement and 10% of the patient can gain only slight improvement of the hearing and remaining 5% of the patient may expect the some degree of hearing, sense only hearing loss after operation and dead air 1 to 2% cases. Tinnitus may not be improved, vertigo may be present in immediate post-operative period, may be permanent, taste may be altered or lost and a small chance of facial nerve palsy. Indication or criteria for step is surgery. Loss of hearing by ear conduction is not more than 70 decibel. That means the range is 45 to 65 decibel in the speech frequencies of the worst ear. First of all, loss of hearing by ear conduction is not more than 70 decibel. That means 45 to 65 decibel in the speech frequencies of the worst ear. And number two, the loss of hearing by bone conduction is not more than 30 decibel in the speech range. Ear conduction and bone conduction, ear and bone conduction, ear and bone gap, AB gap should be at least 15 decibel and speech discrimination should be 60% or more for a good hearing improvement. Progress of the disorder has not started early, very early, not be very rapid. Contraindication of the operation of the stripedectomy, number one, only hearing ear Number two, the otitis external or perforated tympanic membrane, that means the active infection in the external ear or middle ear. Number three, step is fixation by tympanic sclerosis. Number four is the Meniere's disease. Number five is the pregnancy. Number six is the revision stepidectomy. Number seven is in young patient, rapidly spreading disease and positive short sign. Number eight, the early fixation with a small degree of hearing loss. And number nine is the unilateral autosclerosis. Then the complication of this step is surgery. Number one is the tympanic membrane tear. Number two is the incus dislocation. Number three is the corda tympani injury. Number four is the fracture, long process of the incus. Number five is the perilim gusher. Number six is the injury to the facial nerve. Number seven is the bleeding. And number eight injury to the saccule because it is the most common important cause of dead air in uncompleted surgery as it lies 0.4 mm beneath the foot plate of the stepes. Autoscotic patient speaks in soft voice because in case of conductive deafness patient hears his own voice loudly due to the movement of the mandible it again becomes louder due to the absence of the ambient noise as there is defect in the air conduction 
because the patient has conductive deafness. Because it is asked uh, usually in the viva, why the autosclerotic patient speaks in soft voice? Because patient hears his own voice loudly due to the movement of the mandible. It again becomes louder due to the absence of the ambient noise as there is defect in the air conduction because the patient has conductive deafness. But in case of sensorineural deafness, patient speaks loudly as he cannot hear his own voice, so he raises the voice. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.